The brothers wish. The brothers wish, brothers wish. The brothers wish. The brothers. You're now listening to Greg. It's the Brothers Wisp. Let's take a hey ride. Hey everybody, through this space is Greg this with Why Greg Talks like number it? ten. Uh, this time around, we have a brand new face, shiny new face. It is Stephanie Burdine. Hi. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part. This is the part where we say hello, Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Ah, there you go. So this is um, just for everybody who's unsure. This is a podcast companion to the Normal Brothers Wisp. This is really filled more with my thoughts from the week and generally a, a guest's thoughts for the week. So this is a very informal mix of technical and non-technical material. So if that's not your bag, proceed with caution or uh, wait for the other uh, Brothers Wisp stuff. You're looking for just purely technical and boring and nerdy dudes. So this time we're gonna, we've got a dudette. That's awesome. Hey. You are the first official female we've had on the podcast. No, I take it back. You were the second. There was one from <laughs> Australia a long time ago who popped in for like five seconds. So, Oh, there you go. Yeah, first from North second. American. First North American. So that's good. So yeah. uh, let's get a little background on you, Stephanie. You uh, live here in College Station, so you're very, very near me. You uh, have uh, some sort of affiliation with James, who's done a few of these, right? Yeah, yeah, some sort of affiliation. Okay. <laughs> he calls me his wife, you know. Oh, gotcha. But you're actually brother and sister, right? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you're not from Kentucky. I get it. I get it. Um, no, no, no. So, but uh, you are in IT, right? Yes. So I'm a project manager. So I get to work with a, a team of developers. Uh, it's kind of like chasing rabbits around the... No, not rabbits. Rabbits are too organized. I think it's more like herding cats. <laughs> right, it's a tour. well you know and it's interesting too most of the guys i think that listen to this are kind of like systems administrators or network administrators and so i'm assuming running a team of devs is uh a whole different animal like you said not necessarily rabbits more more like cats huh yeah i'd say uh what i've noticed about uh network and systems guys are they tend to kind of want to be off in their own little world and kind of doing their own thing Developers want to collaborate and be together, but they have no idea how to get that organization going. So it's, it's a different beast altogether, I think. <laughs> really? I, I would have thought it would have been the other way around. I thought uh, developers would want to kind of lock themselves in a room all by themselves and just bang away at code until, you know, they woke up at five in the morning and realized they had <laughs> fallen asleep on their keyboard or something. <laughs> they probably do that once in a while and they think they want that but once they have it they don't like it i've i found that out over the last few weeks <laughs> hmm. excellent well how is um i mean as everybody knows we're doing all this uh isolation stuff so i'm assuming most of your team is working remote right they're working from the house sort of thing yes uh almost 100 percent of my team so it's more like 80 percent of my team is working remote um we do have a tester and he's in um, our campus in College Station, and he's doing hardware tests and, and stuff like that. He has to be on site to do his job. One of the but few that's that, on site. We're all right? remote. What's that? So, is this? So, I'm assuming this is brand new for those guys. What's it like? Um, um, what was the like? What was it like before and after the transition? So before the transition, I actually had one of my developers say, I'd love to work from home. I'd be so productive. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. Famous last words. Well, just to be fair, though, he did have a newborn in between that statement and today. Oh, uh, fair enough. But apparently his productivity is a little low. It's it's the newborn is what he says. Slightly distracted. I can assume that. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Aside from being at home all the time and your wife thinking, oh, my God, somebody can finally take this thing off my hands for a couple <laughs> of minutes. Uh, you know, there's the the lost sleep at night. And then, uh, I mean, you know, everybody gets that. Everybody's in that boat. It's as, true. It's true. As well as the undue stress of, oh, my gosh, I've got this kid and I got to make sure he doesn't get sick. So, you know, yeah. I, I can totally understand all that stuff. Yeah. Pretty nutty. What's yep. your uh, What's your favorite part of uh, running a team like that? Uh, so one of them has uh, it, it's actually someone who works with James as well um, has said that uh, he has weaponized autism is is what he calls it <laughs> and man 
it, it, it makes a lot of sense. I feel like my entire team there. So we have the regular developers who are doing like, uh, you know, fixes on the, on our portals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then you have my guys who are doing ops and they're building environments and infrastructure. Um, and as well as the regular coding. And so I feel like I, I could be a little biased, but I feel like my guys are like up here compared to most of the other guys. Which is and, ironic because you're, you're doing visual stuff and most people aren't actually watching this. So, Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought it was visual. <laughs> nah, nah, for sure. But no, so you, yeah, but I mean, that's what everybody does, right? They always think that their, uh, their baby's the best looking baby out there, right? Everybody else is oh, yeah. ugly. I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're, they're a little bit higher up there on the on the uh, intelligence level, genius scale uh, type guys. These are these are really highly effective uh, professionals, and I feel like the more intelligent you get, the less organized you are. Almost not that organized people aren't intelligent, but right. uh, it, I don't know. It just seems like you get distracted with more things. You seems focus on one thing and not other things. You know that's. I, Something I've seen is we had a sister company um, at Aston and it was Lintech and they do a lot of research. So they've got a bunch of PhDs, a bunch of brilliant guys over there. But what I've noticed is it seems the more renowned that guy is in his field and the, the better he is at that thing, it's like his intelligence is almost paper thin. Like he is a genius on this thing that is so narrow. And then yeah. normal parts of everyday life are a mystery to some of these people. You know, they're just, they, they miss, um, normal social cues and things like, like the, the time, um, some guy sent out a company wide email to everyone in all companies telling him, everybody that he, uh, he shouldn't have got the extra big Slurpee because the sugar gave him like really bad diarrhea. <laughs> you, know, it was oh like, you know what I mean? It's stuff like that. Or the guy that was like yeah. vacuuming the parking lot at 2 AM, you know, it's just, they're, they're different sorts of dudes and, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's true for the guys you're working with, but it seems um, great guys for sure, right? But uh, yeah, 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 just different. yeah, they're, they're they're different. They're awesome. I I don't know. I I'm different too, so I fit in with them. Uh, it took a little bit for me to kind of elbow my way in a little bit, but um, I don't know. They're they're fun to work with. They've they've got a lot. They got a good dynamic going on. It, it's a weird dynamic. <laughs> Why do you say it took a little while to elbow your way in? What does that mean? Um, so I'm I'm only 32 and I'm female. Baby. And yeah, yeah. And uh, they didn't think I was techie enough at first, and I would have to say I would agree with them. Um, I just started in the tech industry within the last 18 months, so um i didn't have i had to earn the respect versus already having it when i got put on the team there were multiple levels to that well i think anybody coming into a team has to earn respect i don't i don't think it matters what your pedigree is people are still gonna think i've been here i've you know i've slogged my way through this and you know you got to show me that you uh deserve to be here too tell me you said you weren't in tech so tell me about your sorted past because i know it's very uh it's a very okay. interesting windy road uh, that you made yeah. your way into technology. Super messy. Uh, so I'm a I'm a jack of all trades, which I know you're not aware. Like, I, you are. If if I'm a jack of all trades, I think you're up a, about three levels higher. You and James, <laughs> you guys do a billion different things, and you're better at them than I am. But uh, I tend to be good at whatever I try. Not great, just kind of good. And um, so I can jump into anything and uh, do it pretty well. So I started out as a soldier, and then I jumped into uh, education, and then I was a professor. And uh, throughout all that, I realized I was working 60 hours a week for a very low amount of pay. And, you know, teachers don't get paid very well. And um, I was... You're going way too fast. You're going way too fast. So you were a soldier in what branch of the military? The army. All right. So you were, what do you, what do you call those people? Cause like, uh, Marines, what they're jarheads, right? They're jarheads. Yeah. What we're are soldiers? What are, it. oh, you're a soldier. That's what you call it's just soldiers. army. Yeah. Just a, okay. Well, so then you went into <laughs> education 
And, uh, yeah. well, I mean, what's your, uh, like, what's your education, like your personal education at college? Like you have a couple of masters okay. or something like that, right? I have five degrees. Oh, geez. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started out with cosmetology. Okay. Uh, got my, <laughs> got my cosmetology license. Uh, hated that. I absolutely hated it. It was terrible. But I fi- <laughs> I finished that thing. I finished that. So so what are you qualified to do? Like hair and nails Everything. or what? I can do hair, nails, facials. Yeah. Like it's you doing, aesthetic. You doing some Brazilian waxing or No, I declined that one. You know? <laughs> it, it wasn't even the female waxing, it was the male waxing. Oh. I didn't wanna, you know. Oh, I don't even let's oh, I don't even <laughs> think about how much hair you've seen me how much hair it's more of a pelt that i have and i don't even like imagine you know it's like that scene from 40 year old virgin where he became the man o' lantern or whatever just waxing shit oh, oh, that's horrible anyway so you have a yeah. cosmetology and, yeah uh, and then uh i have an associate's uh, general studies because i still didn't know what i wanted to do and then i got a bachelor's in biological science education uh, and then my master's was in mathematics education. And then my second master's is uh, IT management. Oh, baller. When did you get the IT management yeah. one? Um, I'm actually currently still working on that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But after you got your, uh, you said mathematics master's, you started, I mean, you were, you weren't like at high school, right? Weren't you a professor at college somewhere? Yes, I was working at Bling College as a professor for mathematics. All right. So how do you feel like uh, working with all of those um, emotionally stunted in-betweeners uh, prepared you for working with IT people? <laughs> I can't imagine how how that translates. That, that doesn't correlate at all. No. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> we really are. Uh, a vast majority of us are just arrested <laughs> development, you know, I mean, we're trapped at uh, 17 or 18. So I'm assuming it was a fairly smooth transition. You're like, oh, I recognize where I'm at. Okay. Actually, yeah, I, uh, I went straight from being a professor uh, into this IT career and a lot of the skills translated. So I, I, I worked in student, I, I like to do, it's called student centered learning. And it gets people to be responsible for themselves, which usually the teacher's kind of responsible for everything. So it's a different way of teaching. It translated really well into managing IT people. <laughs> Student center. So, so so give me give me the the elevator pitch on that. Okay, so student centered learning is when you identify areas that students can take control of, um, and and when those areas are identified, you put them in charge of and responsible for that particular activity in their lives. And it just empowers students to, to be tiny humans instead of children. Uh, if you're working with children or, you know, sometimes adults. IT people. Like yeah, yeah, you could say it. Um, <laughs> so give me, give me an example if you can of kind of what that means. So in, instead of, uh, it directly related to education, um, instead of, reminding your students over and over again that they have an assignment, you give them a way to keep track of that assignment, and then you kind of let them fail if they fail. Um, and a lot of teachers are afraid to let their students fail, and, and so they'll kind of carry them along to the end of the class. This is a kind of a slap in the face at the very beginning, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's so hard, and then they figure out how to do it, and then by the end of the class, you're not having to do as much work keeping them on task and such. So it's similar to Agile. Um, it's, it's empowering the developers to be in charge of themselves and responsible for themselves and pull in tickets themselves and that sort of thing. It gives them the power to work. Gotcha. So you make them yeah. accountable for it. Do you kind of, uh, at least in the education piece, do you kind of give them strategies on accountability and how to do that? Or is it just like, good luck? How's that work? No, no, you definitely set up. So uh, you work with positive and negative. Uh, those are probably not the correct terms, and I can't think of them right now, but positive and negative consequences. Um, and and you use logic. You don't, you don't give consequences that don't make sense. So um, it, this also goes into parenting and managing and everything. Um, there's a consequence for every action, mm-hmm. regardless of whether you're at work or at school or at home. 
Um, and, and a lot of them are just natural, but it's pointing those natural consequences out and kind of enforcing, um, enforcing consequences if they're not, um, natural, I guess. <laughs> gotcha. You know, I found yeah. most of the guys that I've, and this was, God, this was a struggle for me for a really long time. And I, I can't say that I a hundred percent have it mastered. I've got my hands around it to the most, for the most part. Um, but coming up with kind of, a a project management style or accountability system for myself uh, was really tough. And then um, yeah. working with my guys to, you know, cause it's like, I'm not your PAA, you know, your personal analog assistant. I'm not, right. I'm not here to constantly nag you and say, all right, did you do this in this project? How about this? How about this? How about that? You know, it's like, because yeah. it's like, I don't, I want to give you the thing, make sure you have all the tools required to complete the task. And then, you yep. come to me if you've got a problem or when it's complete, either, either of those is fine, <laughs> but it's like, I yeah. don't, I don't want to have to. And so helping guys develop that has always been a struggle for me. Um, so I was just curious if you kind of make a framework for them or, you know, cause what I found is everybody's accountability system that really works for them is slightly different or very different. And I don't, I mean, I was never introduced to one until I forced myself to like, seven years ago like i can't you know i was well in my 30s um and so i was just curious like our teachers trying to introduce different accountability concepts to kids nowadays to maybe help them golly dude i would have been so much more productive in my younger years had i somebody forced me to do that. well you're right because they did they would just spoon feed me as yeah. required yeah so is this a, yeah. I mean, is it a new way of thinking sort of thing it is okay yeah i wrote my master's thesis on it it was uh it, it's relatively new and it's difficult so a lot of teachers won't do it it's it's not something that is is frequently done some teachers intuitively do it but um i have used it with my developers too and they don't know i'm using it but i am <laughs> and so uh some of the ways that uh you you show them that they're failing or, or succeeding is by running metrics and, and that's a very scrum thing to do as well. So um, we, we start by identifying what we're going to uh, produce metrics on, and then we push for that one thing. And it's important to only focus on improving one or two things at a time, because otherwise it's overwhelming. Right. So you, pro you probably felt that, like you, you try to organize everything and, and you're like, oh, there's just so many things, and then you don't organize anything at all, so. For sure. There was a, a yeah. book I read that was um, transformative for me. And I heard somebody mention it multiple times before I ever actually looked at it. And I got through it pretty fast. Actually, I got to admit, I didn't read the whole thing. I read up until the parts where I like got <laughs> what I needed and then I stopped. Um, which is yeah. probably not the right way of doing it. There's probably some big epiphany right at the end that I missed. But it was uh, getting things done. And in that one, they really just talk about um, building a list. And if it's something you can do in like five minutes or less, you do it now. You don't put it on the list. And then you Thanks. constantly go through the list every day. And then, um, you know, as things are on there and you can knock them off, you kind of work through them. If it's something that you have to kick down the road, you move it to a different list, like in the future. You know, this is stuff that I can accomplish now. And it's just, I don't know, that, that sort of thinking has really helped me get through a lot of um, long-term projects. But you know what I've also found is that uh, and you probably get a sense of this now too, is that as you move to where I'm not really completing small, simple tasks anymore, I now I'm doing more like bigger project management. It feels yeah. like I never get a win. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, these, yep. these, these things are never done. It's like, I sometimes yep. I just want to like burp, burp, do a little check mark and feel good about myself. Like I did a thing. Um, yeah. but it's, I haven't really gotten that at work because it's like um i could do those things or i could delegate them to somebody and that guy's actually going to learn how to do that thing and he needs to learn that yeah. thing and then repetition is the key for him to to really lock it in and, and learn to troubleshoot and so it's like i would be robbing him of that opportunity if i took it from him just because i want that quick win and i know how to do it. yeah do you run into that stuff like do you need yeah. do you need that gratification every now and then like ah, i did a thing of course i had a. Uh... Uh, not too long ago, I was just absolutely miserable at work, uh, just having a crappy day, one of those, one of those days, and, um, I have no idea what wasn't feeling, 
Yeah, no, no, you never, never. have those. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, my developer, one of my developers came up to me and, and just told me what a good job I was doing and um, how much I'd helped the team progress and and he was feeling valued again where he had felt like he wasn't performing well enough or he wasn't moving fast enough and I'd, I'd identified some tasks that he could do um, so that way he could feel that gratification and, and he could feel like he was doing something right, well. Right. Um, and he, he noticed it, and then he thanked me for it, which in turn gave me gratification for assisting him that's to cool. feel the same way. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, that's an awesome way of looking at it. You know, and I, I love to try and um, praise my guys as much as possible, even for, like, mundane stuff. Like, I'll I'll see that they grabbed a task, took care of it, and I never had to interact. I'm like, dude, thank you so much for that, you know? Cause it really... I didn't have to talk to you today! <laughs> well, you know what I mean? It's like, to me... To me that's showing that they're growing, right? Because a lot of sure. the guys, I, I don't know about your team, but I get babies on my team. And so they have a lot of professional and personal development to do. And so you kind of, you know, you're, you're helping guide them and shape them. And as you see them grow, it's just very gratifying to see that for me. So yeah, that goes, yeah. that goes back to some, some old daddy issues I have, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think this is the platform for that. It absolutely is. This is the companion. I get to talk about whatever in this one. Yeah. So it definitely it, it feeds that little man that says, you know what, I I can do this. I don't know why you couldn't, but I can. So here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's interesting. But so okay. So you're you got into IT. You're doing all that stuff. Now you're working on your master's in IT project management. Is that what you said? It's just IT management. IT management. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I'm getting my uh, CAPM, which is the, it, it's like a PMP, but it's for people who haven't been working in the industry as long. Um, so it's it's the baby version of the, the certification. <laughs> is it more or less a stepping stone to get the full PMP or no? Nah? Yeah, yeah, it can be. It, you don't have to have it before you get the PMP, but you do have to have a significant number of hours on projects in order to gotcha. take the certification so it sounds like you're a very goal oriented <clears throat> human um if i had to guess from all the stuff that you do and you all these accomplishments is that kind of how you is that kind of how you make your way through your occupation or through whatever you you set this goal of like here's this thing i'm going to attain and then you just work your ass off till you get there and then how do you decide what the next yeah. goal is going to be well, I had a really hard time with that when I started in the industry because I started as a secretary. Ah, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> There's no stepping stone from secretary to IT manager. No. Um, so, <laughs> so I just started asking around trying to find my niche, I guess. Uh, I took the job and um, the boss, the, the manager who was hiring me, and um, he said, you're, you're overqualified for this position. I was like, I know, but I really want to work here, and I just don't know what I want to do yet. He he was very respectful of that and said, sure, give me a chance. And I kind of jumped into, um, I tried coding. Um, I learned a little bit about networking. Uh, I took the AWS, uh, let's see, engineer cert course. And then I uh, I ended up doing Scrum Master, and I, I really liked that Um until I figured out what project management was. So what's Scrum Master better. in the context of Scrum Master? Uh, I only Master know it, I only know it from Agile rugby. Man. That's the only way I know it. Scrum Master. There's a Scrum Master in rugby? Well, they have a Scrum, like where all the guys like get together like in a huddle sort of, and they're all head to head. They call it a Scrum. Is rugby the one with the sticks and the nets on the sticks? <laughs> no, it looks like it kind of looks like football. Only um, they're not constantly blowing the whistle. It's it's sort of different, but they don't wear pads oh, either. That's the one where they beat the shit out of each other. Well, actually, supposedly they don't hurt each other nearly as much as people in the NFL does. Since they don't have pads, they don't like hit each other really hard because they would hurt themselves oh, okay. too. Although Can you, they, like, punch? they hit the hell out of each other sometimes. Don't get me wrong, but I think there's less they, traumatic like, punch brain each other? Nah, nah, they just kind of like oh. knock each other over and just kind of push each other back and stuff. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, what is a, what is a scrum master? What, what's the, <laughs> give me some context on that. 
Uh, so it's an agile, uh, Scrum is a form of agile uh, work. And uh, Scrum Master is the person who facilitates the DevOps team. Uh, they facilitate them in organization and communication and transparency. Uh, they're doing tickets in JIRA for them and making sure that they know what they're supposed to be working on. And um, they're kind of the person who performs all the ceremonies, like uh, the meetings and such, like backlog grooming and sprint planning and stuff gotcha. that are done when you, yeah. So you're the person that has um, uh, actual human skills and you can communicate with other humans <laughs> on behalf of your devs. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you keep talking about exactly. agile. If somebody's completely unfamiliar with Agile, what, what is, why does this word keep coming up? Uh, so Agile is the hot word right now in in technology. It's Everyone's so right doing now. it. Okay, well, explain <laughs> it to me because I'm not doing it. <laughs> so, so normally uh, tech companies work in a waterfall method that starts at the top and cascades down. It takes a long time, costs a lot of money, um, Agile is supposed to be better because it gives the team more power and it it kind of empowers your developers to be able to pick up projects and tickets and such on their own and know exactly what's going to happen each week. Um, so uh, you focus on you you focus on small parts of a prod uh, of a product being released instead of these massive projects. So instead of uh, having an entire uh, software written, you're going to release small amounts of software that are functional on their own and valuable to the company, but aren't taking five months of development and three months of code review and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, that's interesting. Something yeah. else I've noticed you failed to mention is that you are also a novelist. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, this is a, I just kind of slipped this, my this mind. This is all techie, techie. <laughs> <laughs> So, how many novels have you released up to this point? Uh, I think I'm at eleven. Jeez. I'm not quite sure. I haven't counted for a while. Mm, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not all lined up on your wall back there, uh, beautifully displayed. I wish. So what? Uh, what's your what's your I, genre of choice there? Um. So I I do multiple genres. I have three pen names. Uh, my favorite is science fiction, uh, but that is not the money maker. So I write uh, clean romance and steamy romance. Clean romance and steamy romance. What's the? Uh... <laughs> Oh God! See, we keep venturing in all these areas. I have no knowledge of, uh, in particular, romance of any sort. Yeah, romance. Is, uh, yeah, that's. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure life. what that word is. Give me a second. I'm gonna Google it. But um, what's, what's the difference between clean romance and steamy romance? Well, to keep it rated PG, one is a Hallmark movie, and the other one is a rated R movie. Okay. <laughs> Well, okay, clean and steamy. What are what are the other variations on romance then? Um, there's sweet, which is somewhere in the middle. Uh, that's kind of a gray area. Is that somewhere between you know? clean and steamy? Right in between those? Yes. Yeah. And then you got erotica, which is kind of self explanatory. You're right, just the opposite end of uh... <laughs> So really that's just four genres in romance, that's all you get? I mean, there's there's sub genres like romantic comedies and contemporary or historical and. Yeah. I've never even. It blows my mind because one of my favorite genres of movie is rom com, and I never thought about romantic comedy novels. I never. I don't know why that didn't occur to me that that would exist, but it seems like it would, right? Yeah, they do. I I actually hate reading romance, so. I yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! That reminds me of like um, this lady. She used to own this restaurant called the Lemon Wedge, and she was this amazing baker. Um, you know, she was always baking all these pies and just all this, you know, just amazing cakes and stuff like that. And uh, I was like, "So, what's your process for like coming up with these crazy flavor combinations?" She goes, I don't know. I just kind of throw it together and mix it and blah, blah. I was like, so at what point do you taste it? She goes, oh, I don't. I'm like, I think she was like super gluten intolerant or something. She was like, I just make this stuff and then pff, people buy it. I don't know, man. I was like, dude, that's crazy. 
That's crazy. So you're it's writing awesome. this stuff. You're like, I don't like this slop, but you're you're spitting it out. <laughs> you get it. That's crazy. I am. How does one? It's a money maker. How did you get into that? Like how? What? I'm assuming you just decided you were going to set a goal for yourself that I'm going to write this novel. But what? I mean, what convinced you to write a novel? Where does that start? Well, it it was in one of my English classes. Uh, she had us write an essay, uh, and it was it was fictional. And I finished it, and she said, "I want I want the rest." Hmm. And I was like, "Oh, okay." And she's like, "Why don't you finish this?" And I was like, "Okay, I'll give it a shot." Um, so I looked up how long a novel was, and it was fifty thousand to a hundred thousand words. And I was like, "All right, I'm going to sit down and write at least fifty thousand words." <laughs> So I did. <laughs> How long did it take you? Uh, the first one took me over a year. It it was ridiculous. It 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 was slow, and I um I had no idea what I was doing. The learning curve is really steep when you're publishing. So I'm I'm self published. Um, I had to do so much research. I had to I, I grabbed a mentor and, and had them kind of you know show me the ropes That's and everything. Awesome. But awesome. it was a long process. <laughs> How'd, yeah. How'd you go about finding yeah, your mentor? Facebook, you know, social networking. That's <laughs> what I do. Hey, I want to write a novel. I need somebody who's done this before. And then somebody popped up. <laughs> I did some research and I found some groups and I started uh, making some good connections. And, and I'm I'm pretty decent with making friends. So yeah, I've noticed. they were my friends. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I hear you get you're a good connection too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's crazy, dude. It's just, um, you have such, I love to call it sorted, uh, because it's so interesting. It's, it's so varied. Like you're, but you know what? It, as you start looking at these things, I can definitely see how you kind of plot a course towards things. You determine that I'm going to do this thing and, uh, you just accomplishment. And that's, uh, pretty bizarre to me because I know I, I mean I have I have this you can probably see behind me a monument to unfinished projects right so just as work catches up with me and stuff like that but you you I mean you still yeah. write novels right so you go to work you do your IPT project management and you take care of uh, six kids so five young ones five. and then yeah yeah you've got an adult child that lives at your house <laughs> don't lie to me we both, I was wondering if you were counting uh, yeah I was counting James for sure um, but then you also write novels at night and then you also make baby Yoda statues and stuff. Oh yeah. That was, that was hilarious. I sent it to this random romance novel author and she goes, what the fuck is that? And, and she, <laughs> she's like, who the hell would try to sell that thing? She didn't know I was actually showing her. It was me. Um, I thought that was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> oh, my bad. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. But you know, something I've found is that, um, no experience in my life has ever been wasted. Right. You know, like I, it's true. at some point or another, those things come back around. Um, and so I think it's so important for people to do as many things as possible. And you have what I would describe as an insatiable curiosity, just because you, you're always researching stuff. You're always trying new things. You're always pushing yourself towards stuff. I don't know that you, your comfort zone must encompass the entire earth because I had, you know, it's just <laughs> like you, uh, you were telling me prior to this, like I, I, you know, this is definitely outside of my comfort zone and um, I can't imagine how you can be in the army. You can teach people, you can run teams and yet sitting down and talking to somebody on a podcast feels uncomfortable that's bizarre to me so i i think it's i think it's awesome and i don't think enough people push themselves towards new things right like I, to me if you're not uncomfortable you're not growing you know what i mean you're not it's true. you're not expanding and doing things like so what advice would you give to people if they want to get out of their comfort zone a bit um identify a place that uh you can grow and find something that you're excited about or curious about and set set a small goal for yourself or set a large goal and small goals to reach that large goal, you know? Gotcha. So if you wanna if you if you wanna write a book, decide you're gonna write a book, but break it down by the day. Don't don't look at the big overall hundred thousand word project. You gotta you gotta set small milestones for yourself. Yeah. 
I would definitely, I mean, I definitely subscribe to that. I've, I've heard it described as, um, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Oh yeah. 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 That's great. Right. Little, little chunks. And, um, while you have your novels, I did my, um, LinkedIn learning Linda courses. And sometimes I would have so yeah. much in front of me that I would, uh, I would be just, I'd like, I would just scream on the inside. Like, there's no way it's just, it, Oh, I just wanted to, yeah. I would contemplate how comfortable it would be to find out I have like a terminal illness. Cause it's like, then I wouldn't have to worry about this stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's like, oh, you... that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But just think how sweet it would be the, the release of death. No, but you know, you've got so much stuff <laughs> piling up on top of you feel like you're going to freak out. And, and that's exactly what I would do is I would just set tiny little goals. Like today yeah. I'm going to <laughs> finish one chapter of script. I'm just going to do one. And then sometimes, uh, you know, I would have to stay up a little extra late, you know, in between or do whatever or, or burn yeah. through lunch. But um, yeah, definitely making those little goals. I, I like the idea of having a lofty goal because I think sometimes you really need to know which direction you're going. You know, the path you take to get there may be varied, but um, I think definitely having an ultimate goal is, is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That, that, that dream, I guess. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I like a little mystery in life. Like when we go on vacation... I like knowing where we're going. It may be a couple of things, but we usually play it fast and loose with everything else. I love that. Just to kind of, you know, it's like, we'll see what happens. Let's figure it out. Are you, are you that kind of way? Are you very regimented and oriented and you want everything on a, a definite schedule? I, I'm kind of in between. I like, I like to have an idea oh, of where we're going. So romance. I'll, I'll make a schedule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little in between. There you go. In between, there we go. Um, yeah, so I like to have like a schedule, but uh, I don't mind changing it once we get there. I just I, I want an idea of what we're gonna do. Yeah. One thing yeah. that drives me crazy is showing up to something late. I absolutely hate showing up to something late. That's uh, kind of the worst thing. In the I world seem to me. recall that. Yeah, I it just because <laughs> you know it throws everything off. But well, you know what I mean. Uh, for me, if I show if somebody shows up late to a meeting with me, to me, and they don't have like a really good reason. To me, that's them saying their time is more valuable than mine, and I don't want to do that to anybody else, right? Because yeah. I think everybody's yeah. very limited. I just assume they have eight million things going like I do, so their time is very valuable, and I don't want to waste that. So good, clear communication on this stuff. So I don't like being. I was late. only one minute late, Greg. Come on, <laughs> I was one minute. And yet, your time is apparently more valuable than mine. So. One minute more valuable, apparently. <laughs> no, no. I'm talking about like, like big stuff. Like, uh, yeah. I don't want to show up to somebody's wedding late, you know? Or, uh, yeah, especially if you're the groom. Oh, yeah. well, you know, stuff happens. Schedule slide. Everything's <laughs> flexible. I think so long as you're clearly communicating with people, it's okay. Well, that's yeah. interesting. So give me, I know we've, we haven't even, well, I mean, we, I guess we mentioned it a little bit, but, Tell me about your perspective on females in IT, because that is something that you guys are, are definitely underrepresented um, on the network engineering side. So I'm on like some podcast group or not podcast, group, but Facebook groups called like Wisp Talk. And so in the wireless ISP industry, I've seen almost no females. There's maybe two that I've seen yeah. pop in there. Um, so very underrepresented there. I've never really met have I met any other female network engineers? I don't think I have. I've met other systems and security um, women for sure. Yeah. And I've met other project managers like yourself in IT that are female. Um, what do you, I know that's a, I mean, it's a, it's a, a lofty question, but what do you attribute some of that to? I think uh, I, I actually thought about this beforehand. It's something that's on my mind a lot. Um, being a math and science teacher, kind of as my background, um, I see that our females, are, all the females in our society are not being pushed into those job um, openings, those career paths, those, those skill sets. Um, it, I think it's just a societal thing. Women have always had a specific role uh, in our society. 
and that has only just recently been challenged and and start started to change and i mean we've had some big changes over the last 50 years but we're still challenging that uh idea and i think uh we just need to it, it's at the root it's it's not it's not that there aren't intelligent women who can do software engineering and that are like not passionate about um um tech and, and you know learning new things it's that we're not training our kids to be curious and to pursue you know sciences and maths and that's why we have stem programs that focus just on females instead of males uh, because there are it's a male dominated industry so you think it's more kind of societal as in I, and, and this is how I this is how I learn and grow is that I try and put things into my own words back at the person they shake their head at me like I'm an idiot but um, like in your opinion you feel like a girl I guess heading to college maybe has some interest in computer science sort of stuff but feels like that's traditionally a male's role or do you think maybe they would feel uncomfortable in going that or like what kind of like, what do you mean no I think it's I think it's even sooner than that. I think it's when they're they're little, when they're like eight, nine years old. Um, males get pushed into looking into construction and building things, and it's that hands-on or cerebral architecture that they're doing that makes uh, that that construction process. That is what uh, feeds that curiosity for for building things um, in, in in technology and you know in our cloud infrastructures and everything. Um, I think females are more traditionally pushed towards caring roles like um, teachers and nurses and, you know, doctors or um, scrum masters. It's, that's a servant leader role. A project manager is also, you, you should be a good servant leader. Um, so it, it's more of those servant leadership roles versus those, uh, the, the technological building and such. Interesting. That was a long ramble. No, no, no. Sorry. No, that wasn't very long. I think I've done the majority of talking here uh, just because I love the sound of my own voice. But um, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, when you say STEM, I've always thought of it more as STEAM, right? So it's science, technology, uh, engineering. And I think art. I think art should fit in there as well as uh, like mechanical stuff, right? Because I feel like that's underrepresented in a lot of uh, what people do. Because I, I feel like a lot of... A lot of that science stuff and education, I think there's so much, or um, like engineering, I think there's so much art also associated with that. Because there's some of my favorite makers are also artists. So they, they, while they're building physical structures, they're making real things. There's also this experimentation associated with it, you know, and, and some of it yeah. really, I think, feeds so well into the other as they experiment and build this beautiful thing. They also discover new ways of manufacturing that or I need this 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 weird fun art project I'm building to have this weird hingy thing and so then they start experimenting and you know they they kind of and it's so funny yep. how people's art will, will feed into kind of their professional life and I think that's underrepresented in a lot of um, uh, well I mean I can only look through my eyeballs so kind of in the you know the cisgender white male because everybody needs my opinion um, you know, just from like <laughs> men in technology, uh, a lot of us, um, don't see art in what we do and they don't put value in that. And some of the greatest engineers I know, uh, like this guy, Nick Braulio, uh, he came from an art background and I think there's something about yeah. the way artists think like yourself, because you are so, um, good at art as well. I've, you know, I've seen you make some crazy stuff and, um, as well as your novels, right? That's just a different part of the brain that you're entirely using there that um how people underrate that stuff and the the people that do have the ability to tap into that part of their brain or it just it's they're better at what they do it makes them better at all facets and i think that comes back to like you said curiosity so do you feel like young women now are just allowed to be more curious and pursue whatever they find interesting or i mean it's, that it's getting there do you think the idea of having a stem program specifically focused on females like how does that differ from just saying hey whatever you're curious about let's chase that let's find it 
and figure out where it goes. I mean, do you think, do you think yeah. that STEM, because I don't really, well, it, I was never introduced to the STEM stuff as a kid. I just kind of found it. I was just curious because I don't know. I, I, and you're, you have that education background. So this, you're so much more equipped to answer any of these questions. And I've been completely interrupting you. So I will be quiet now. I hit the mute button. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so with, with girls, I, I think that when we're, there's so much, there's, there's so much subconscious stuff going on in everyone's brains that, um, is inherent in our society and inherent in the way we're raised. People don't even notice when they're being biased against a gender or, mm. or another race or anything like that. And so I think by focusing on, um, on females with STEM, you're, you're attempting to be intentional about overcoming that bias instead of just passively encouraging. So, um, I, I think, I think females can find their passion for STEM without a program that's focused on them. But I think there's a lot of subconscious biases that we have to overcome in order to get there. Gotcha. So do you feel like if that job opportunity for the receptionist at the company you're working for now um, didn't manifest itself, do you think you would still be interested in this IT stuff? Or do you think that's really what sparked it for you? Um, What sparked it for me was actually James's passion, believe it or not. Uh, him talking about networking and talking about computers. And uh, he he teaches me things too. So he started showing me some networking and, and walking me through networking diagrams and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is art and math and science all rolled into one. I really, really like this. So it was it was just my jam. It was, <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. I can learn so much stuff. I haven't run out of things to learn, by the way. I, I have just been constantly devouring it all. It never, it never, ever ends. I mean, it never ends. It's great. You know... I I'd be curious, something, I don't know why it just occurred to me, but there is so much beauty in data and in uh, networking, when you really start getting deep in there, um, we start doing a lot of monitoring, a lot of trending, a lot of telemetry over time. And, and you can represent that stuff generally graphically is, is how most of us do it. And there is so much yeah. beauty in looking at the data and the way things move and people's behaviors and their patterns and how that stuff works together. Have you gotten into any of that? Because I love that stuff. Oh, you're speaking my language. <laughs> yes. That makes me so excited. <laughs> oh, dude, it is yes. amazing. Um, it's beautiful. It's fun to take all that raw data and just look at all the patterns that are going on in it. And to be able to show someone who isn't inclined to read through all that data, just show them a picture of what that data is. Uh, that's one of the, that's actually one of the things that uh, got me moved into the scrum master position, which is where I started uh, and eventually in that project management was being able to, to represent data in, in a visual way. It's, it's really fun. <laughs> you know, what's, um, what's always been something fun for me too, is, um, doing quality of service, right? And that's where, um, uh, say at an apartment complex somewhere, they've only got a hundred megs of internet coming in, right? Back in the day, we actually used to have very <laughs> low throughput, uh, going to these guys cause that's all they would purchase. And so we'd have to do quality of service. And in that, what you do is you elevate certain things that you find important over others. And um, it really, that stuff only comes to play really when there's a congestion situation, which would generally happen every night, right? When we hit what we call peak time. And I used to yeah. graph each individual cue that I would make, right? A cue being able to hold certain amounts of information. And that's how we would actually do the constraints. So you'd make cues for like real time, real time uh, audio. So if people are doing VoIP calls and then you would have one for like streaming video and then one for HTTP and then one for gaming traffic, you kind of make all these buckets that you're allowing people to move stuff into. And so you'd graph that real time and then you could watch it overnight and see, see how all that stuff moved. And then you would say, oh, well, they hardly used any of this bandwidth here. You'll pull it out of this queue and you'll put it over on that one. And then you can just kind of massage things slowly over time. You do more matching and prioritization and just... I used to love doing that stuff. I don't know, man. It was just like you were a conductor. You're such a nerd. No, it's like you're a conductor <laughs> in front of an orchestra and you're, I mean, you're just, you're moving everything and just 
gracefully weaving it all together. Oh, it is so fun. It is so fun to do that stuff. I love it. That sounds really cool. That sounds really cool. But as you, as you grow up and you move higher and higher up the food chain, you get to do that fun stuff less and less. Um, but, uh, I feel like in my, uh, uh, new role, I'm taking a new role. You knew that. Uh, I feel like yeah, yeah. that excitement, all this excitement, this is where all this stuff is coming from. Like I am getting so excited again uh, to be able to do all this stuff. And I, I, I super can't wait to get in there and, and go crazy. <laughs> Just <laughs> That'll be great. Get nutty. Let me look at my notes. I've got some notes here. Uh, <laughs> I knew I, uh, oh, there's one. That's the one. Um, so I, <laughs> I noticed that you left some gaps out and you were trying to move over uh, your, uh, your history pretty fast. And so a note I made for myself is somebody wanted me to, they were doing a proposal for some education money or something like that. And they wanted to use me in the proposal. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and they were like, well, we need a bio of you. And I said, well, okay, we'll just jump on my LinkedIn and find all the parts that you think are relevant to this. And they're like, eh, we really want you to do it. And uh, I was thinking, God, that is awful. I hate writing my own bio. And it, evidently, you are yes. trying to gloss over it at 100 miles an hour. What is it about you that, like, why don't you? What? What's the What's the cringe factor there? Does it feel like you're boasting or something? Why is that? Why is it tough for you to, to talk about your pedigree and all of your master's degrees that you're trying to blow past and just, what's the What's the story there? I don't know. It just doesn't. I don't. None of it feels relevant right now because I'm working in project management and. So I can see the value added by those things, but it's hard to quantify that and 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 tell people like what what those things actually did to get me where I am right now and to teach me the skills that I have and and stuff like that. So I don't know, it just when you when you rattle it all off, they go, "Oh, she she just didn't know what she wanted to do, so she did everything." You know? <laughs> <laughs> to, I don't know. I saw logical progression. In my opinion, it's not you didn't know what you wanted to do. You actually wanted to do everything, right? Your curiosity that it led you to all of these things. Past term. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. You know what? That's what I do. I I find a new task and I I get to some level of mastery that I feel comfortable with, and then I put that away and I move yeah. to the next thing. And I think. Um, I think that's a comfortable way of moving through life. I feel like I keep building myself, but you know what? Your answer there also uh, a couple things pop into mind is I learned a long time ago. Somebody said, nobody else is going to toot your horn. So you got to do it for yourself. Right. Es yeah. Especially in it. Yeah. If you want to get noticed, you got to make sure people know what you did. Right. And you can say yeah. it's under the guise yep. of just that's important. clear communication, but everybody needs to know what you did. Yeah. Um, Yep. You don't have to. That's actually an important part of my job. You know, yeah. like I've got to, I've got to be able to speak up for my developers and say what they did. Uh, that when they, when I started with them, they weren't telling anyone what they were working on. Like they're, they were a black box <laughs> and no information was coming out at all. And uh, I started telling uh, everybody, just different teams, different departments, everyone. I was like, oh my gosh guess what my guys are doing and I walk them through like these minor accomplishments but I'm I'm showing that there's progress being made and I'm showing them that they're doing things that are difficult and that have never been done before because you know they built us a solution that was unique to our situation and they were really ingenious about building it um, and, and I wanted everyone to know that and and that boosted their morale but it also increased everyone's confidence in them you know so your displeasure for talking about your accomplishments, do you think that's how a lot of women feel and what maybe holds them back from progressing in IT? It, it may be. Um, I have, I, I'm, you know, I'm pretty blunt and honest for the most part. I just kind of say things the way they are. I, I've been called cocky um, when I, when I rattle off what I'm good at. Um, so I'll say, I'm actually really good at that, or I can do that, or that's something that's easy for me or whatever. And, and I have been, I've been called out as cocky or arrogant. Um, so it, I've kind of taken a step back from that. I, I'm just trying to, you know, tell people what my skills are so I can, I can assist and, and fill in gaps and everything, but that's not, that's not really how it's viewed when I say it. Hmm. 
Okay. So if a woman says it, she's uh, she's being cocky. She's being a bitch. She's, you know, um, there's yeah. all these interesting words that apply specifically to women. She's being spirited or something like that. Whereas if a guy says it, then it's uh, he's being confident. Right. He's. Uh, yeah. So it's just I've never been called just confident. That would be great. I would I would love to be called confident. Well, you know what I think is is funny is um you're very charming, you're very disarming whenever you're telling me this stuff, you're saying it with a big smile on your face. So it, it's hard for me to believe. You know, it's hard for me to see again, also I don't assume malice in anybody. I always assume um I always assume good from people, right? Like so when they're telling me something, I'm not assuming that they're trying to like <laughs> I didn't think you were trying to measure dicks with me. I didn't assume that that's what was happening. You know, I just assumed sure. that you were, uh, and that's what I assume about everybody. that They're just telling me stuff. And then I just look at people as people, as humans. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of times I look at people like um, tools in a toolbox. I don't care what gender you are. I look at what your, um, what your strengths are. You know, where, where can you help me in my life? Where can I fit you in to do this or that thing? Right. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me what parts you were born with. Yeah. It's what skills you possess is kind of how I look at people, which is, I don't know if that's the right way of looking at people, but it's my way of looking at people. So I just, I don't care about that other stuff. It's like, can you complete the task? Can you do this thing? Can you help me? All right. So we're having some connectivity problems. So we're going to wrap okay. it up right about here. So Stephanie, if people wanted to get a hold of you out on the internet, gasp, they may actually want to do that. How would you have them do that? Uh, I have a LinkedIn profile. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they they can just shoot me an email. Okay. So find her on LinkedIn. That's Stephanie Burdine, right? B-U-R-D-I-N-E. That's correct. Excellent. And you guys, you know how to find me. I'm Greg at GregSoul.com, where I very occasionally blog. You can also find me on the Brothers Wisp. Uh, it's brotherswisp.com. You can also become a patron and get access to our patron only slack. That's patreon.com forward slash your brother's wisp. Throw us a couple bones. We'll get you in there and let you ask all of the lovely questions to all the lovely people. So Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today. The first North American female. Equipment and <laughs> Thanks, Greg. And uh, we'll <laughs> talk to you really soon. Thanks, guys. Up the tower so people right. can start searching, shooting up the web and neighborhoods, net surfing. We got horrible jokes, we're loud and annoying, but we're informative facts, we're not disappointing. Just give us a listen, cause fun is the mission. I'm telling you, you don't know what you are missing. Ideas and some good comedy given. If you missed the show already, don't worry, you're forgiven.